Fire glass geode coasters are something special. If you think you'd like to learn just how you can make these, stay tuned. I will take you through all the details. I share a lot of my good tips on how to get an excellent project, and I'll tell you what products I use and how to do it. Hi everybody, it's Jani here for Moon Cusser Art, and I thought I would show you how I've been working with some of these geode molds. I got these from Let's Resin, and they have this space here in the center. When I first got them, I thought, eh, I'm not too crazy about that. But then I started playing around with them a little bit, and I came up with an interesting way of dealing with it. And I do a glass insert in there. These, um, it's the fire glass. It's a reflective fire glass. So you get a nice, let's see if I can get that. Oh, sorry. A little bit too much sparkle there, but <laughs> you can see how they work um, very nicely. Here's another one. I like this one a lot in the brown. It's really pretty. Anyway, I'm going to show you how you can use these molds and some glass and how I go about creating these. So stay tuned. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that your tabletop is level. If your tabletop is not level, your molds are going to be having a tilt in them and you're going to have more resin on one side. So it'll be thick on one side, skinny on another side. Not a good thing. Trust me, I've had it happen. These molds, I use 12 ounces of resin. I'm using the crystal clear resin from the epoxy resin store. It's a nice, it's a thinner weight uh, type of resin. I like it for doing these because I get some nice effects out of it when I'm adding my products into it. So let me get started by, I've got my, this is a one to one ratio and it's really easy to work with. Very easy to mix. You mix it on a one-to-one -one ratio by volume. So what I like to do is I use um, water to get my measurements and I just do, you know, make my marks and I pour. I always put the part B, the hardener, into my cup first and then I add the resin. The hardener is thinner, and so it's easier to have it actually scrape and combine into your mixture. So there's a little tip for you. So you can see I'm just pouring some clear resin into the molds. I'm also gonna pour a little bit into my cups for my colors. So let's get that ready. The color goes a long way in these. Get that there. So I'm using three colors. And I also have, um, I'm gonna put a little bit of resin in another cup. Not much because this one is gonna be for glitter. And yeah, you know, just to add a little little bling in there. Everybody likes a little bling. So with your silicone molds, you want to be careful that you don't damage the molds. They are fragile. They only have so long to live. And you do get bubbles. I know it's probably hard to see. And I use one of these little lighters because it has the long neck on it and I can get down in there. And I'm just going to go quickly around pop any bubbles uh, just like that and then I kind of eyeball the molds real quick and make sure that you know the resin is moving into all of the nooks and crannies and uh, if I need to add a little bit more to a mold I'll do that and you can see I'm using a toothpick and I'm moving it very carefully 
on the bottom. I don't want to damage the mold in any way. That one's nice and full. That one I need a little bit extra, and that one I need a little bit extra. So let's top those off. Oh, there goes the dog. My furry doorbell. So that's good for that. Put that fill in there. Fill in there. Now, as I'm looking, I'm just looking to see if I see any big bubbles, and I don't. That's the other nice thing about this crystal clear resin from the epoxy resin store is that it's it has a very thin viscosity, and so what happens is it mixes really quickly and it also does not hold bubbles. So here's my first color I'm mixing up. This is from Artie Sue. Artie Sue is no more, sorry to say. I loved Artie Sue. <laughs> um, this is one of her metallics and uh, I just love it. Uh, this is called Jade, so I don't need very much. I'm gonna put that in there. And uh, these are paste, a metallic paste. Artie Sue was, well, she still is. She's still here. Sue's still around. <laughs> um, but anyway, I got these from her years ago already. And look at how pretty that is. It's a, just a really nice, almost like a, a turquoise uh, shade of, well, jade or a pale shade of jade. Very, very pretty. I like that. All right, all right, my next color, I'm using Art Tree Creations. This is one of their H2O pigments. They are also from Australia. And this is called uh, Stormy Tropics. And again, you don't need a lot of color. That's probably, well, maybe. I always, I want to make sure I don't add too much. You can always add more. So better to start out with less. In this case, less is more. So we just want to pigment that clear. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? It's lovely. I want to make sure that I'm incorporating everything off of my pop stick. Get that all blended in there. And that's nice. Okay, that's all I needed. Very intense color. And I'm gonna be using some black diamond pigments. This is Ghost Satin Green. I'm gonna show you one of my, this is one of my little swatches that I make up. Sorry about the glare of that. Isn't that pretty? It's got just a twinkle uh, uh, effect from that green in there. So again, same thing. A little bit goes a long way. So let's just get, here's my cup of that. So now, you know, you can see as I'm sitting here doing all this mixing up of my color that there's more bubbles. I'll try to zoom in for you. There's more bubbles coming to the surface. Now, that, again, there are not a lot of bubbles in this resin because of its viscosity. It's uh, on the thin side. So we'll stir that in. I think I see how that green kind of just shines in there. It's so cool. That's fun. I'm going to have links to all my products. Uh, well, of course, not the Artie Sue because that's no more. Um, but everything's in the description box. So look in the description box. And I will post links for you guys if you're interested in getting any of these products. I highly recommend them. 
I try to test my products before I recommend them. That way I know that I'm telling you something that I enjoy using. And if you've watched me before, you know I love Black Diamond pigments. I use them a lot, especially for my geode coasters. I use them an awful lot. Uh, okay, and here's the glitter that I might be adding. I might not, but this is from Michael's. It's their Extra Fine. All right, so while those bubbles have been coming up, we can give it another quick little torch. Pop those up. All right. Okay. So, what I like to do, this is my 99% alcohol. I put it in this little eyedropper bottle. Put that down here, I guess. And here's my Artie Sue. I always start from the outside working in. So right before I pour, that's about six drops of alcohol that I've added there. I don't need to put it in the clear, but I will put it. That was a little bit more. And in it goes with the black diamonds. All right. So let's start with Artie Sue's Jade. And I use these little paper cups. They're, you know, mouthwash cups that you can pick up. I get mine at Walmart or Target. And I just pinch right down to make a little spout. And then I'm just going to start going around the side edge. You can see I'm not too worried about, you know, how even I'm doing any of this. All right, get that out of my way. And again, here's the Art Tree Creations. This is their H2O. And this is the Stormy Tropics. So we're just gonna pour that right in here. Get that color in. And then I do, uh, yeah, come in with the black diamonds. Again, that's the ghost satin green. Finally, I've got my glitter. Screw that up a little. the center. So you can see now, notice how the Artie Sue metallic is kind of coming over top of the other pigments. So what happens, you can see like the mica is really dropping down in there, right? You can see how, see there? can really see how it just drops down in. The, the weight of the mica just sends it right down in. Now, I've reserved some of my clear resin. And what I'm going to do is using my popsicle stick to kind of get it to lay up on there. And then I go over top. Now I have an embossing tool. And I'm going to warm up the resin with that. So I think I want a little bit more of this one. And you can see with the metallic that I'm using, this Artie Sue, it really will take over a piece. So I want to be careful about how I'm going about doing that. All right, so now we're gonna throw in some more 
of the color or tree creations and again I'm just gonna get a little loopy and pour that around we still have a little bit more of throw a little bit more alcohol in there before we pour it out I've got the rest of my clear resin in here and I'm just going to top that off so I'm just going to pour any which way and you can see the edges while you're working so you can see if you're filling it up evenly you want to make sure that you put even amounts in your molds you don't want one mold to be thicker than another cup. So now I'm gonna give it another torch. Again, I'm staying away from the sides of my mold. I'm trying to focus into the middle. And you can take your popsicle stick. I don't recommend dragging it across the bottom, but you can see, I can see, from when I poured the first layer of the mica pigment, the black diamond, it shot right down to the bottom. The top is looking really nice. So I'm just gonna, well, maybe I won't use a popsicle stick. Where's my toothpick? Uh, there it is. All right, so I'm gonna take my toothpick and I'm just gonna kind of drag it around. Whoops, get that chunk off. And just kind of swirl things a little bit. All right, that looks cool. One more little pop with my embossing tool. So all my glitter, I got some in this one that kind of came up to the surface, but this one barely any came up. So what I think I'm gonna do is put glitter in a cup and lightly sprinkle it across the top, just light. And that's a dry sprinkle. That'll work. It's barely noticeable, but in bright light, it'll catch the light and it'll look good. All right, that's it. Let me clean up my mess. And then I cover it up and we'll come back tomorrow. All right, let's pop this off. It's the next day. And there they are, pretty little things. Now, you can see, well, my glove is a little torn up. It's time to replace. It's been 24 hours since I poured these. And we're just gonna roll that edge off of there. But wear your gloves. Your gloves are going to protect. I'm not worried about protecting myself. I'm worried about if there's any soft spots. And I also don't want to leave fingerprints. I have done that so that's how easy they come off and that's what they look like on the top and that's what they look like on the back so I'm gonna unmold them all and uh, you can see why I tend to like this side that doesn't do anything for me so um, yeah let's uh, put you on fast forward and out they come Now, I took, I have a metal nail file. I used to use an emery board on this. So there's a lip edge here around the middle. Anytime your resin is kissing up to the silicone mold, you tend to get a little bit of a lip edge. You can see right there. 
There's a lip edge on the outside. So I take this metal nail file. I used to use an emery board and it was a pain in the neck because I couldn't really get in there. And I came across this in the hub's toolbox and yeah, it was just collecting dust there. So now it's in my studio and it's got a nice pointy tip. It lets me get right down in here. I didn't do this working at my table here because it creates a lot of dust and I don't want that on my table. So I take it outside and I use my file and I take down that lip edge, okay? So the good news about me liking this top side is that means this side is really flat. So what I'm gonna do is I take my handy dandy, my favorite. Everybody that watches my channel knows I have a love affair with blue tape. And I just take that and I'm gonna cover over these centers. I don't want to, I wanna be careful that I don't put pressure and make it kind of push in there. I want it to be nice and flat and then I'm going to use just my fingernail. I have terrible fingernails anyway. And I make sure that I have it really tight. Um, I, you don't have to really do much to get it nice and tight. It's a clean, smooth back because it's fresh out of the mold. So there's my tape. So I do that on each one of these. So let me do that. Now comes for the tedious part. So this glass, this is a uh, fireplace glass. Uh, you know, you get it for your outdoor fire pits and stuff. And this is quarter inch, it's reflective. So that means one side has a mirrored side to it. And uh, it's really pretty. And what I do is I just take these, I put them with the mirror side down and I just place them into the center, just like that. And I kind of just create a mosaic with the pieces by filling in the center as best I can. And having a little bit of spacing is okay. I push it down tight against my tape as best I can again. It's not perfect, but I don't want it to be perfect. Actually, I want it to be a little bit different. And uh, that gives it interest. But this uh, quarter inch thickness works perfectly in my centers because it is a quarter inch. This is poured at a quarter inch. And then when I pour my coat, my clear coat over top, it's going to completely cover. Oops, it's a little bit bigger gap than I want there. Mm. Try to fit it as best I can. I don't want it, you know, like I said, I don't want it perfectly tight. And then I just keep checking to make sure I'm putting them with the mirror side down. So it's like doing a little mini mosaic. And uh, yeah, this is a little one. The bigger one's a little bit more work, but you know, it goes quick. So I'm gonna go about doing that and uh, let's put you on time-lapse. what I have done now. So they're all filled with pieces of the glass, mirror side down, and I batched up just one ounce of the epoxy resin stores general use. And it's winter time here, but I have the heater on. The temperature in the room is 73 degrees and the heater is quite warm. 
So I put a metal tray on top of the heater and I set these little cups up there and all the bubbles just rise to the top. So now I'm just gonna use my popsicle stick and I'm going to put the resin on top of the glass. And it's so thin now from sitting on top of the heater that it just runs. Cause I, it's only been a couple of minutes. It's been five minutes since I batched this up and let it sit on the heater. And you want it to be very liquid. And that way it's gonna run in between all the little nooks and crannies and fill those spaces up. Cause you don't wanna have any holes because that will create bubbles when you go to, to do your top coat. Now, if there's little bubbles trapped in here because, you know, it, it, there's some tight spots and maybe it, the bubbles get trapped down in there, I forgive it for that. There's only so much you can do. And the bubbles actually catch the light, so I'm okay with that. Just take my time and make sure I get it right in around the edges. Just like that. Spot over here. So just push it around with my popsicle stick. Get it on all those spots. Looks good. And I'll do the others. All right, I have filled all the areas and you can see in this one, zoom in, there's a couple of bubbles that have come up to the top as it was sitting there and that's perfect. So now we just hit it with the torch, quick and easy like that. And then I take my toothpick and I just kind of Look for spots that maybe the resin hasn't gotten into. Or maybe there's a bubble down in there and I can make that bubble come up. So that's it. Those can sit like that and cure. I'll put the cover over top of them and I will see you tomorrow. Welcome back to the studio. So these have cured overnight and the resin is hard in there. So now I can remove the tape. I like using the painter's tape because it comes off just like that and there's no sticky residue. It is my favorite tape. Okay. So there's the back. You can see there's the shiny reflective side of the glass. And, and it's a little rough, but that's okay. It's the bottom. I don't care. And here, there's the top. Isn't that pretty? All right, so what do we have to do today? So today, we have to do our top coat. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put liquid latex on the back. I'll do that first. And then I'm going to add, um, yeah, I'm gonna go with silver on this one. So I'm gonna paint with a silver, um, it's a gilding paint, uh, a leafing paint. And I'm going to paint a little edge and I'm going to paint my sides. And once everything is dry, then I will clear coat. So let's move along.
are ready to do the final top coat now. So this is the counterculture uh, do-it-yourself. So counterculture DIY. I will put a link in the description box for it. This is the resin that I use faithfully on top of or for a clear coat on my coasters. It's crystal clear. I love that. It's thick. See how it piles up there? It's very thick. I like that. And <clears throat> um, the best part is it is heat resistant up to 500 degrees. Now, many of you have made coasters only to find out that you get rings show up this one is not going to have rings show up. I let my coasters cure for 30 days, 30 days, so that I know I am getting a full hard cure. And so, yeah, it, we're, we're gonna pour this again. There's a lip edge here on the coasters, and that's going to help build up a really thick layer of this resin. I have leveled my tabletop, very important. You want your resin to stay on top and not go overboard. And I like to use my finger to apply it to the edges. Remember we put the liquid latex uh, on the back around the sides. It has been two hours since I put that paint on there and that is fully dry. So we are good to go. I'm going to use, this is, uh, I've got a, I take my old gloves because, you know, they fall apart after a while and I cut the fingers off and I use them as a sleeve on my index finger. So let me make a little bit of room here, get these out of my way because I don't want to be making a huge mess. I've got a piece of wax paper down here on the tabletop. So I'm just gonna dip my finger right into the resin and I use that to apply it to the sides. So I keep the coaster sitting on top of my little stand. I use my old yogurt cups for all kinds of things. I use them as stands. I use them to mix. This is an old yogurt cup. People have said, wow, you eat a lot of yogurt. Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. It's good for me. Darn it. I like it. I'm eating, you know, healthy. That's not a bad thing. So I just, you know, keep dipping my finger and rubbing it along the edge. That latex on the back is going to work to keep the drips that happen and go around onto that edge when I go to clean up it just, they come right off. I used to put the um, latex <clears throat> on after I put the paint on, but I found out that, you know, every once in a while you, you get a little bit of paint on your back. And uh, if I put the latex on before I paint, the latex, I'm it's easier for me to just get it on the, the surface that I'm applying it to, and I don't worry about it running over the edge or anything. It stays where I put it. So now I put the liquid latex on first, and then I paint my sides. And then that way, my painting on my sides, it's not going to get onto the bottom because when I pull the latex off, guess what? Any, you know, wisps of paint from my brush hairs are gonna come off as well. So I'm gonna put you on fast forward here and I'm gonna finish doing the sides. I've got my sides coated, so I'm going to take that off and get it out of my way. And now I'm going to put my clear coat on top. 
Now again, this is four ounces of resin. It's a lot, an ounce on to top of each one, but um, I remember I left that lip edge on there and I did that on purpose so that I could pour these a little bit, you know, let them kind of pool up and be a little bit on the deeper side. So we're just gonna try to keep them evenly matched on the use of resin. And I kind of keep just a little bit on reserve for now. I'll end up using it. But I use my popsicle stick and this, I, I just go slow. I'm very careful. I want to make sure I get it right on that lip edge. And then I just take my little creme brulee torch. Here's a little tip for you. Make sure if you're not using it that you turn it off. If you don't turn it off, I find that it leaks gas. And then I come back because it's filled with the, you know, what is it, uh, butane. And uh, if I don't close the valve, it leaks out on me. So I always close it. <laughs> All right, so don't you don't need a big flame. just like that I'm gonna pop the bubbles all right so let me put you back on fast forward and I'm gonna finish these other ones up we're gonna let these sit and I'm gonna put a cover on them I'm gonna come back in 10 minutes and do another pop of bubbles. See you in a bit. All right, it has been 10 minutes. So you can, uh oh, sorry. Uh, this big container that I use, I use it for other things. I don't store anything in it, but I do use it, you know, for other things. Here's my word of wisdom. My secret little nugget. Clean the insides of your containers. They, especially in the winter time, which it is here in the Northeast, um, they collect dust particles really easily. If you have a container that has dust on it and you put it over top of your resin pieces, guess what? You're gonna get dust on your resin pieces. So clean them out, you know, Every little bit helps. All right, and I can see right here, I've got a bubble that came up from inside my glass. So let's turn the torch back on and pop that. Come on, here it goes. So that's why I wait 10 minutes and come back so that I can get, if there's a spot where, you know, the resin didn't get in there when I was putting the glass pieces in, and this is one of them. So I'm gonna take my toothpick and I'm gonna help get that resin to go into that spot. Now there's little micro bubbles that have come to the surface while I was off using up that last tiny bit. So I'm just gonna do a nice sweep. Get those little micro bubbles out. All right, and I'm gonna leave it sit until tomorrow. See you then. I don't know about the rest of you, but it's always exciting to come and check your work the next day, see how everything went. You know, if it's sitting in a mold, it's a lot of fun. Taking a peek at it in the morning is the best. So here we are. Check out that finish. That 
is beautiful. No dust. Love it. All right. So, on the back now, uh, I've got my gloves on. And I'm going to set it down. Each one is beautiful. So, taking my time and cleaning my resin, you know, my container that I use to protect it from dust, it is worth doing that. Look at these. Okay, that's how you get the best finish that you can get. Wow. They're perfect. Absolutely perfect. That's good. That's my garbage. Okay, so what I need to do now is I, I have my gloves on. And again, you know, a fresh coat of clear resin. I have gotten fingerprints on it, so... I tend to wear the gloves, but I'm going to be getting the back off. It's important to do that the next day. So I actually find that having gloves on to do that does not work well. <laughs> and I am brutal on my fingernails. They're terrible fingernails. And what can I say? It's my lot in life. So I like to get this off. And there's the latex. I put it on thick, and look at that. <laughs> but it's important to get it off the next day. So what I do is I just take my fingernail, and that's how easy it is. Get it in here. And you can see there's a drip here, right? So I just take my fingernail, and I make sure that I'm pulling it this way. If I go that way, I have a chance to break the edge off, and I don't want to ruin my edge. So there's a drip. It just breaks free thanks to that liquid latex. Now, I know some people say, oh, have you tried using the glue? No, I have not. I have the latex. So I have it, and I'm going to use it. I like, you know, how this works. And there's a tough one. I'm, I'm going to ruin my nail for it, but, you know, what nail? There it goes. They, they come right off. And look, because I put the latex on first, I don't have any brush stroke marks on the back here. All right. It's important to do this the very next day because if you wait, if you let it sit, those drips will get harder to remove. It's important to do it soon. Don't let it sit. I don't have to use a utility knife. If, if I had a stubborn spot, what I would do is I have my embossing tool. I don't need to use my heat gun. This is such a small thing. If I'm doing a big piece of resin work, then yeah, I'll use my heat gun to warm the edge. But if I had a stubborn spot, I would put this embossing tool on a low speed and I would just warm it really quickly and that makes the resin a little bit more flexible again. And then you can pop it off. All right, I have a big pile of liquid latex with drips in it sitting over here. Everything is all cleaned up and pretty. And this is how I finish them. These are silicone, clear silicone with an adhesive back. They're called cabinet bumpers. And I get them off of Amazon. Um, I buy them in bulk because I use quite a few of them. Each one of my coasters is going to get four bumpers on the back to keep them lifted off of the tabletop surfaces and also to protect the furniture because I don't want these to scratch anybody's furniture. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I hope to be back bringing you more 
projects to do with your resin. Thanks, and we'll see you next time here on Mooncusser Art.